Shiva Vaidyanathan, author of Googleization from the University of Virginia. Shiva, welcome to TechCrunch TV. Thank you, Andrew. It's good to be here. So, Shiva, you have written a very, I don't know if it's an angry book or certainly an outrage book about Google. What are you arguing in the Googleization of everything? Well, uh, I, I hope not to anger anyone, uh, and I hope not to outrage anyone, but I do hope to, to provoke them or um, uh, prod them to, uh, to think more clearly about how we use Google in our lives, to think about how um, weird and amazing it is that we've folded Google into so many important parts of our lives in such a short period of time. I mean, the company's been around a dozen years. It's been in most of our lives for about a decade, uh, and we rely on it every day in so many different ways. So I think it, it, it's crucial that we, first of all, understand how it works, and secondly, that we question it and, and ask questions about what it hides as much as what it provides to us. What does it hide? Well, remember, Google's real value to us is not so much in what it links us to, but in what it conceals in the process of exploring the web. That's the essence of search. The essence of search is figuring out what not to show you, right? So, um, so Google is based on algorithms, and every algorithm, of course, has values baked into it, right? Every algorithm is the product of a series of value decisions by the programmers. Um, now, those value decisions are not always explicit, uh, and in Google's case, um, we've been able to discern them over time and through statements uh, from people at Google, um, and also through our general use of Google, that especially now, we're seeing that um, Google favors um, the recent over the classic in terms of information. It favors the local over the global. It favors the personal over the universal. Um, and that's becoming increasingly true as Google changes its algorithms. Now, all of that works beautifully for shopping, right? It gives us the consumer goods we want, the services we're interested in. It avoids confusion. If you're searching for the word Jaguar and you're a car enthusiast, you're likely to get ads for cars if, or, and, and search results for cars. If you're a, 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 an enthusiast about the Amazon, you're likely to get information about the Jungle Cat. Uh, and, and, and those sorts of basic tweaks make a lot of sense for most of the searches we do, which are really about consumption. What I want people to think about is the fact that as Google changes to become better for shopping, it, it doesn't necessarily serve our goals for learning as well as we might hope. We've had a very good run for about a decade in which one company has served us really well in both areas. I'm concerned that that's not going to be the situation in the future, and if that's the case, um, we should probably explore better models, different models, newer models uh, to, to facilitate our needs as, as citizens, as, uh, as, as, uh, as parents, uh, as people who have to navigate the world through these information worlds. In the Googleization of everything, you compare Google to having the power of Caesar. What do you mean by that, and ah. should we be really worried? Okay, but the domain in this case, right, Caesar, Caesar ruled an empire, but in the, the domain I'm talking about here is the World Wide Web, right? So uh, uh, Google essentially runs the web for us. It is uh, the, the ruler who assumed power in a, in a vacuum, right? Before Google stepped forth, before we essentially agreed to let Google mold the web experience for us, uh, the web was a confusing place, an unmanageable place, an ungovernable place, and the assumption was it would never be governed. I want to turn that on its head. I don't want people thinking that the web is a wild place that is ungovernable because in fact there is a governor of the web, there is an emperor of the web, it is Google, it is largely a benevolent emperor, emperor but it doesn't have to be, and it might not always be, and it might not always be in all cases all around the world now. Um, the, the comparison with Caesar is, is much more about the way that it took control in a vacuum than uh, any aspect of tyranny. Um, what tyranny there is doesn't really hurt people, right, the way that a real life dictator does. Um, so again, it's a provocative notion, but I want people to grasp the idea that the web is not ungoverned nor ungovernable. 